Hello athletes, Travis here, back with another video and one that I've actually been thinking about recording for quite some time, but it's been tricky to kind of put these thoughts into kind of a, a clear, concise output for you guys to consume. All right, but the topic of today's conversation is going to be the difference between fitness and conditioning and understanding the difference and the point of understanding that difference of trying to increase an athlete's comfort and understanding of how they contribute to their performance at any given time and how their training is going to produce one and the other over the course of time or even within a given moment, all right? And I say this, this, this is important because if you've ever said things like or heard people say things like, oh, I'm so out of shape, or I'm afraid of taking days off because I don't want to lose anything. Those are questions that really kind of come from a lack of understanding of conditioning and fitness. And I think that, you know, if we can get you and athletes in general to the sense where they can remain more motivated and remain more comfortable with the process and what happens over the process, then that is going to improve their ability to perform, all right? And improve their ability to stay focused on the process of training and, and be healthy and be happy with this activity that they're chosen. So, fitness conditioning. Fitness is going to be something that we use to describe your body's ability to physiologically produce energy, all right? So that can be an aerobic energy, that can be anaerobic energy. For the most part, we're gonna be talking about fitness from an aerobic side, all right? Because aerobic fitness is something that you can develop over the course of time and you're never really going to lose that fitness, all right? Once you've built it, once you've created fitness, you have it, all right? It's in the bank, all right? And I have a, a really good uh, video talking about aerobic fitness and aerobic capacity, all right? And I'll kind of link that up here into that white box that pops up, but it is a video that I was really happy with and I really think it every athlete should watch that video if you don't have a firm understanding of what aerobic capacity is and how it builds over time. But that aerobic capacity is essentially that fitness, all right? It's that foundation that you've created over time for your body to use the oxygen that you're, that you're taking in to produce energy. Now, the anaerobic contribution to that, to that uh, energy output can't be ignored, but unlike your aerobic fitness and your aerobic capacity, which can be built over time without limit, your anaerobic capacity does have a limit, all right? So, you know, if you spend years uh, really training anaerobically to try to peak out that anaerobic capacity, you're not gonna be able to do that, all right? You're gonna reach a plateau and you're gonna stay at that plateau because your body can only handle so much lactic acid, all right, before it just can't continue to do so, all right? So that your, and your aerobic capacity is very easy to train, all right? It only takes maybe four to eight weeks to really peak out what your aerobic capacity is, all right? So at any given time, you know, your aerobic capacity may be this, you know, and in your, or your anaerobic capacity may be this, and your aerobic capacity is here. And so, you know, if you perform, then then this is the point of your performance, all right? And if you spend another year or two training, your aerobic capacity may be here, and you say you're not training anaerobic capacity, well, it's still gonna be here. It's still only made this little amount over that base aerobic fitness. But it only takes a couple weeks, and you can kind of up bump that anaerobic contribution to your performance so that you're performing here instead of down here but spending five months training aerobic isn't gonna get you up to here, all right? It's still only going to get you to that peak, all right? And so it only takes a couple weeks to get from here to here, and so it is not worthwhile to spend long periods of time including anaerobic training in, uh, in, your, in your training, or anaerobic uh, focus training in your, in your work in order to kind of perform at your peak, all right? It will behoove you to focus on building that aerobic base, all right? And that aerobic base is your fitness, all right? And again, that is not gonna decrease over time. Once you have it, it's there, all right? And you can see this in top level athletes, all right? Athletes that have spent 10, 15, 20 years, you know, achieving peak performance, 
and then they decide to take some time off, all right? You know, either they just want a break or maybe they got injured and, uh, and they've kind of had to take some time away from that training. Well, they don't have to spend another 10, 15, 20 years getting to that same point, all right? All they gotta do is spend a couple months, maybe six to 12 months at the most, getting back to that peak performance uh, and then they can continue on business as usual, all right? And that, that, that lag time there between the break and getting back to fitness, that is covering the conditioning aspect of it, all right? So let's step away from fitness and let's start to talk about conditioning, all right? Conditioning is your muscular contribution to performance, all right? And conditioning is something that you gain very quickly and lose very quickly. And conditioning is also something that is very specific to the activity that you're in, all right? So if you are training at a high level as a rower, um, and then if you suddenly pick up and you wanna go for a run, well, you're gonna have a significant amount of aerobic fitness to produce energy for that run, but your muscles are not gonna be conditioned for that activity, all right? So you might be able to run quickly, but it's not gonna be nearly as comfortable or as pleasant as your rowing, all right? And that is because your running muscles are not conditioned to that activity because you have not been running, you have been rowing. Same thing, you know, if you are very fit and then you go and you play, you know, an intense game of soccer or something like that, all right? You're gonna be extremely sore, all right, for several days because you're using muscles that you are not using and rowing, all right? So that is conditioning. Now the great thing about conditioning is it doesn't take a whole lot for your muscles to condition, all right? You know, generally, you know, you're gonna achieve probably 80, 90% of the conditioning effects of, of your muscular contribution to training within the first two to four weeks or so of an activity, all right? And so if you dive in and you are, you know, you're primarily rowing and you decide you wanna join a a, uh, a soccer league well after two to four weeks of playing soccer on a regular basis your muscles are going to now be conditioned to that activity and uh, you're going to be able to enjoy that activity the same way you enjoy rowing all right you're going to be fully able to access your fitness and see that reflected in your performance and you're going to be feel comfortable all right with that activity of running around and pivoting and moving um, just as you would in rowing originally or if your main sport was running and you picked up soccer all right running while soccer is definitely running um, it is uh, running in terms of the sport of running is primarily linear all right you're running in a fixed direction and you're trying to travel in that direction as quickly as possible whereas running in soccer is very different all right there's a, a lot of lateral motion all right and even though you've been running you might have a you're gonna have an easier transition to picking up soccer and trying to get ready for that soccer league um, you're gonna have an easier transition than the rower is because they haven't been running uh, but you're still gonna have a transition in terms of getting your body used to to moving sideways and pivoting and turning and bursting and um, and all those different differences between that activity and the other one, all right? That's all muscular conditioning, all right? So let's take that back into why are we talking about this, all right? Well, one, certainly for me as a coach, and I'm dealing with athletes, youth athletes in particular, where the focus of my career has been. Um, youth athletes make tons of bad decisions that are centered upon this, this idea of not wanting to lose what they've worked so hard to gain, all right? And so it, they will make decisions like coming to practice sick. Um, they will make decisions about if they feel a little bit of a, a tweak, a bad pain, all right? Like an injury coming on or they've strained something. They will continue training through that because they're afraid of losing all the work that they put in, all right? Because they've done that before. They've taken a little bit of time off and then they come back in and they feel like they feel just kind of blah, they feel just kind of like gunky. Well, that loss is because they've lost some muscular conditioning, all right? It only takes a few days, all right? I would say generally starting around day four uh, and then and then it'll continue beyond um, of not doing an activity to start to lose a little bit of muscular conditioning to it, all right? Where you're gonna get back in and it's gonna feel not quite as sharp and as fresh as it would have been if you had only taken two or three days off. 
All right. So those athletes, they're they've done that before. They've taken time off and they've got back in and they've just kind of felt kind of blah. And so when they're faced with this decision of, oh, well, something's not quite feeling right, or I'm getting a little bit of a, a cold, my throat is sore, I'm kind of feeling a little bit crampy, uh, tired, they'll be like, well, I'm gonna train anyway because I don't wanna lose all this work I've been doing for the season to get ready for my racing. And that really sabotages them because one, either they were getting sick and by training through that, they've compromised their body's ability to deal with that infection and therefore they're probably gonna get more sick and they're gonna be sick for a longer period of time and in the end, they're gonna lose out way more than they would have if they had just taken it easy for a couple days. On the injury side, same idea, all right? If you start to feel a little tweak in your ribs, um, you know, because on the underlying, you're starting to develop, you know, the foundation of a stress fracture, um, and you say, well, I'm just gonna kind of row through it, all right? It's not that bad. And then it gets worse and worse and worse over the course of weeks or the course of a month or two. And then eventually you actually get a stress fracture in that rib. Um, then you definitely have to take off because you're not gonna row through a broken bone. Um, then they've missed out. They've missed out because at their core, when they felt that pain, they didn't say, oh, well, I need to either tell coach or I need to back off and address what's going on here because they were afraid of losing out, all right? Of getting slower. Um, and so if they understand that, that conditioning, all right? If you take a couple days off, then if you take one or two days off, you're definitely not gonna lose anything. If you take four or five days off because you've developed a cold, you got a sore throat, you need to just kind of chill out and let your body fight that immune system, get back in. Yeah, you're gonna be a little bit of kind of, you know, a little gunky, a little bit uh, kind of dull with your performance when you come back in after that five, six day little break there. But it's only gonna take five or six days for your muscles to get back into the groove and to be right back where you were when you left off because the fitness hasn't gone anywhere, all right? It's just the muscles. The muscles are like, oh, we're not doing this anymore we can take a break. And you're like, no, 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 we were just kind of dealing with this illness. Let's get back in, let's get back to the task at hand. And your muscles are like, oh, okay, all right, we'll back in, we'll figure it out, we'll get into this motion, we're conditioned back, and then we can be right where we left off, all right? And so these are important things to understand in order to be able to make good decisions with your training, all right? And also I produced a video where I was talking about cross-training and kind of the dangers of cross-training. Um, and I'll link that kind of up here as well in that white pop-up. Um, but the danger of a cross-training, the core of that video was based on this idea of muscular conditioning, all right? That you can have a very high level of fitness, and if you take that high level of fitness into an activity that you're not used to doing, an activity that hasn't been where you've developed that core, that huge level of fitness, then your muscles aren't conditioned, all right? And if you push yourself to the threshold of your fitness in this activity that you are not conditioned, you are putting yourself at a very high risk of injury, all right? Because the muscles being used in that activity are not conditioned, all right? They're not conditioned to withstand the work that you're gonna put out. So you have to, if you are doing cross training and you're just doing cross training like a one-off or a two-off or you're doing it very infrequently, then you should not push yourself in that cross training the way that you push yourself in your primary activity because your muscles are not prepared for that level of performance, all right? You need to back off, you need to take it easy. Um, if you do want to be able to push yourself in another activity, let's say that you're a rower, but you want to make cycling a, a very high component of your training, all right? And you wanna do some serious cross training cycling, well, if you want to do that, then you need to make sure that you are on a bike on a regular basis, at least three or four times a week um, to make sure that you are conditioning your muscles enough um, that you can take all that fitness of rowing, uh, which is still your primary sport, and put it onto the bike and do hard sessions on the bike without having to worry about stressing or hurting the muscles that are primarily used in cycling, all right? I would still not go at the same level on the bike as you do in rowing. I would still never go as hard in a secondary or tertiary sport as you do in your primary sport um, because there's always going to be a little bit of loss 
and kind of peak conditioning to an activity that you're not doing on a regular basis. So that's it, all right? I think that will cover kind of what I'm talking about and hopefully you guys can appreciate kind of the difference between fitness and conditioning and be comfortable. Whether you're coming back into training after a short break, maybe you were sick, or a short break, maybe you had to take a couple weeks because you were starting to develop uh, either kind of some pain in the knee, and elbow, if you're a rower, you know, those ribs are, are a big thing or your back, certainly and that you've taken a little bit of time off from your primary kind of volume and primary activity to address those weaknesses and to build up the strength to support that weaknesses before diving back into your training, that you can be comfortable with the fact that you're gonna very quickly get your muscles back into the swing, all right? It might take a couple days, it might take a couple weeks. If you've taken extended periods of time off, if you've taken a month off, certainly if you've taken years off, it's gonna take you a couple months to condition and to be able to access where you were before, but it will happen, all right? And you can rest assured that that fitness is still there. For me, you know, in my peak, you know, when I was out of the competitive phase, you know, I was producing, you know, 2Ks in the mid 630s at 150 pounds, whatever I was at the time. You know, when I was in season, generally my speed was eight to 10 seconds faster than that. Um, you know, I can, I am confident that even now at 39 years old, if I put six months of solid training, if I put six months into training the way that I was training back then in, in my early to mid 20s, that I would be able to produce 635, 634, 2Ks without much of issue. And I'd probably be much faster than that um, now because I've got another decade and a half of aerobic fitness under my belt. Um, and then, you know, correspondingly, you know, if I added another four months of competitive training to that, of kind of uh, fine tuning that aerobic fitness so that I compete at a national championship or whatever my focus was at the time, then similarly, I would be eight to 10 seconds faster on a 2K um, than that base would take me, all right? And so, you know, I think I at least got another 10 years before, you know, I can maybe like say, well, maybe I'm only gonna get to a 640 this time with that training. Um, but still, all right, that fitness is there, that fitness is in me, all right? And so, and that fitness is gonna be in you as well, all right? And so if, you, if you're rowing, you know, if you've stopped, you know, say if you're in your, in your mid 30s and you took eight, 10 years off to kind of really focus on the career, to start a new business, uh, to have kids and to get to the point where those kids are in school and you have a little bit of extra time for yourself, um, then rest assured that if you come back in and you put the same amount of work that you were putting in, you know, that decade or decade and a half prior, that you will be able to get to the same point that you that you were before. All right, you know. And granted, if you've added another 40 or 50 pounds, um, you know, over the course of that time, and I've been there before. You know, I peaked out at 204 pounds, and I was there two years ago. Um, it took a lot of work to get myself back down to where I was. You know, I'm 160 now. All right, I'm not quite at 150 where I was in my peak. But again, if I put in that training, I have no doubt that that six months of training, the way I used to train, would bring me back down to that 150, kind of my my ideal weight for performance and rowing and then I would be able to do what I need to do all right and so you know trust in that process and to be patient with that process and to to be confident in the fact that from the fitness side the work that you've done is always going to be there all right you're always going to have that core level of fitness and that conditioning is something that will come back fairly quickly all right if you get back into training on a regular basis the conditioning will come and then that last comment I will say is to kind of, and this is the place that I've been a ton, is when you're in that very first phase, all right, and this I'm really speaking to kind of the adult athletes out there, all right, the adult athletes who've taken those long breaks or who are inconsistent or may have gotten into training for a couple months and then they, you know, got out of it for a month because they were traveling a lot for work or things got crazy with family and they're getting back into it. That first week, that first two weeks is always going to be kind of trash, right? It's not going to feel great, all right? But, you know, you get through that first two weeks at least, definitely that first three, four weeks, things are going to start to feel good again, all right? And so just kind of be there. Get in that work. Don't feel like you've got to be doing crazy long sessions. You know, you can maintain conditioning with very little work, all right? You can maintain conditioning with you know, for 
for rowing for me like I hop on the erg 10 minutes you know on a regular basis and my muscles will stay conditioned to the point where I can at any time say well I'm gonna row 50 minutes today I'm gonna feel comfortable rowing 50 minutes that day all right with my fitness because I've been rowing 10 minutes on a regular basis so my muscles are used to the rowing whereas if I just came in straight and I was like well I'm gonna row for 50 minutes now even though I haven't really been rowing or maybe I've only been rowing once a week then it's gonna feel very different all right because my muscles aren't gonna be as conditioned to that I'm not gonna be able to access my that core level fitness the way I had in the past but that's it um, so let's wrap the video there hopefully this helped this is a difficult subject to kind of nail down and to get within kind of like a soundbite type video or you know 15 minutes or so that we have and not just kind of going on for an hour so hopefully I was able to give enough information in this to get you guys a basic understanding of the difference between that fitness and conditioning so that you're comfortable making decisions that are best for you and for your health uh, for avoiding injury um, and to be comfortable focusing on other things in your life and to be able to understand how taking a little breaks and coming back in is going to affect how you're feeling kind of on a day-to-day -day, week to week or month to month basis all right so if it did if this helped you give this video a like uh, if you want to hear more videos like this uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel huge shout out to the people that have subscribed so far this channel has really kind of taken off in the last couple months when I've been focusing on this kind of I'll call them porch talks uh, and so Thank you very much to those people that have kind of uh, subscribed and supported the channel by commenting and engaging. I really do appreciate that and uh, hopefully more of you will come and please do feel free to comment down below if you have questions about this topic or any other topics that you would like to see me cover and talk about. And uh, until then, um, take care, good luck with your training and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks guys.